So guys, thank you for joining us. This is the last episode of our uh, What's Your Why series. And I think we, I don't know, you know, we've had some good webinars so far in this, in this, but I think we may have saved the best for last. Um, we'll see, we'll, we'll, we won't get ahead of ourselves, but we are joined obviously by Sang Lucci, um, the, the one and only. And uh, our guest for today is Ronchero. Um, Ooh. Ronchero, say hello. Hello. So uh, Ron has been a huge part of the Steam Room. Um, he's a, he's an alumni of the Sanglucci Master Course. He is a ridiculous trader who has been able to take his experience, the methods that he knew um, and and you know was utilizing prior to taking the Master Course, took what Lucci taught him in terms of tape, in terms of some different perspectives on options, and uh, has turned it into a pretty ridiculously consistent strategy and, and uh, approach to trading. And that's gonna be a lot of what we're talking about today. So um, before we get into that, if you guys have questions throughout, uh, we see we got Anwar in here too. Man, you got like the whole Steam Room crew in yeah, here. Yeah, so yeah, we can show up for you. So um, yeah, we're gonna um, drop questions into the chat throughout and we will do a Q&A at the end of the webinar. Um, before we get into it, I also want to remind everybody that the next um, uh, live session of the Sanguchi Master Course starts on Monday. So we announced yesterday that we're doing a $750 discount for um, for up to 10 people. For those spots already got taken out. So we have six left at that discount. We also have an additional discount if you're a member of the Steam Room or the private Twitter feed. If, if that's the case, email me, charlie at sanguchi.com. But uh, if you guys are interested in getting signed up, definitely recommend that, that you do that. Grab that spot because uh, they are going quickly. So I'll drop the link into the chat, sanguichi.com forward slash MC750. That is where you can uh, see more information about the course. And one of the things that we are doing in the course this time, which is the first time we've ever done that, is we're gonna have a guest uh, guest educator, none other than Ronchero here, talking yeah, about- Yeah, usually I don't like letting people into my little world, man, but yeah, right. the man has earned it, the man's right. earned it. And you guys will see why as we go through this. So um, he, will, Ron's teaching uh, an extra sort of bonus course for everybody. It's going to be three sessions. We're going to go into more details about what that's going to entail at the end of this. But uh, for right now, let's let's jump in. Um, Ron, why don't you give everybody just a quick couple minutes about how you came into trading, your background, and how you would describe your style right now? We'll start there, and then we'll we'll yeah. go in. So. Um for those of you that don't know me, there, there's some information at the website too that has backstory that uh, I've answered some questions on when you guys asked me to. And I think that there's a WebEx from when we met, I think maybe a year or more ago that gives some more background. If you want some more details on that, you can check it out. But basically I started back in the 90s. I was a retail broker. I worked for a company called Oldie Discount, and what those guys were notorious for was back in the days when NASDAQ did not have the regulation on bid-ask spreads, so you would be able to trade a stock like Hutchinson Technology was a big one, and you'd have like a $2 spread between the bid and the ask. So if a customer bought 1,000 shares of the stock, they got it commission-free, but a thousand shares with a two dollar spread is two grand into the pocket of the desk and they they do that a couple hundred thousand times a day and next thing you know ernie oldie's rolling around with a billion dollars right like that that right. was so i i was in that business and um I, I quickly realized i'm making money for all these fools but not for myself because i was the idiot on the other end of the phone making 300 dials a day working from six till nine etc so I kind of um, evolved my way out of the retail uh, trading world and um, met a buddy who had traded some options on Micron around earnings. And the dude turned like four grand into 70K. And I was like, what the hell that just happened? What did I just see? And even, even, I though, I had, even though I had uh, been through the Series 7 and had my all that stuff, that stuff doesn't prepare your teacher to actually do what trading is and right. what the ridiculous types of leverage are and how to use options specifically. So I kind of ambled my way around. Um, I made a lot of money. I lost a lot of money. I did it three times where I took accounts to huge balances, blew them up, huge balance, blew them up, went through a divorce, lived in a house with a bunch of kids who were half my age, slept in a room above a garage, cried myself to sleep every night for two freaking years, called my way back out of a hole, 
and then you know i i just kind of kept fighting and fighting and fighting and um you know i i i just scratched and clawed my way back so i just i'm just one of those morons that never gives up right so that's that's who i am right right that's luchi maybe you can relate to that maybe a little bit maybe i just i just love how he put the chaos first you know what i mean like he just led with the chaos that's right. just that right there it seals the deal for me you know what i mean now you guys know why he's here i don't have right. to say shit Right. I do feel, I mean, I don't know if there's a direct correlation between the agony and pain that traders go through and how good of a trader they are, but um, I there is, just in my unofficial observance of this, you know. Right. Yeah. Not to say that everybody has to go through that level of chaos or whatever. And, and again, like, you know how... You know how everybody used to compare struggles? Like if if yeah. if you were going through something, you never thought anybody else could understand the scope of what you were going through. And then if you heard somebody else's struggle, you'd be like, you'd always be like, oh, that's different. And this is, a, you know, and you every, everybody's struggle is unique to themselves. So whatever that they're going through, even though level wise, it might look easier than the next guy or whatever, like that struggle is yours and that shit right. consumes you just as much as whatever I went through, whatever you went through, or whatever Ron, Sher Ron Cheryl went through, you know? But I think right. people who are willing to put it on the table first, talk about it, immediately it demands and deserves the, uh, the, the respect. Not from like, oh, I should be listening to this person or whatever, but just like, hey, you know, this, if this person was able to get there and they can admit all this stuff off the bat, you, you know you're going to have a good conversation. You, you right. know whatever happens after, it's, you're in a safe environment. You're, you, you know, you're good. Safe zone. This is a safe zone, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ron, I mean, we can go – we're going to dig into a lot of the heavier stuff, you know, to, and, and we'll, 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 we have plenty of time to dig into it. But, I mean, do you want to, like, take us through you, that period where you're talking about two, two years and waking up, you know, life obviously life circumstances are affecting the trading like how did you how were you waking up and trading every day and getting through that like what, what how were you keeping it together so there was i mean especially after the divorce and um how much am i paying for this therapy session by the way um <laughs> uh, we'll see how the results are and then you know then we'll, we'll talk about that you might get taxed on <laughs> Yeah, we'll send you the bill. We'll send you the bill. Don't worry about that right now. <laughs> so, um, I mean, that that post-divorce um, period. So after the 9-11 tragedy is when I really took a huge ass whooping in terms of equity. That That's when things really bottomed out. And then that's when my relationship went, you know, started going sideways bad. And then when I got to that point to where I had, you know, basically nothing left, I was... I was living way below my means. I cut all of my expenses. I, I got rid of all my credit cards. Like, I mean, ridiculous amounts of like, you know, down to the penny. Like, dude, that that light in the closet goes off at friggin' seven o'clock. Period. Like, I'm not paying more than twenty sounds bucks like, for a freaking PG and E bill, right? Sounds like, like my father right there. Sounds like my <laughs> father every day I was growing up. And then right. every every penny that I could scrape together that wasn't going to other stuff was getting put away into a brokerage account. And it took me five years to save up five grand so that I could start trading again. Damn. Damn. <laughs> I didn't know that, bro. Damn, That's bro. God, and and think of it, a man with his skill set, a man with his skill set, a man with all the stuff that he had already done. That's how long. That's how long he spent. You know, just kind of coming back. That shit is crazy, bro. Like crazy. Right. God. Damn. Yep. Yeah. It was. It was not. It was not comfortable. Like I said, I spent. I think I spent two solid years crying myself to sleep every night. Like it was. Right. Just, it was painful. It was not good. And wow. you know, you got you got kid. You got kids that are separated from their from their parents, and you know, kids that are living with their with their mom and and. They're yeah. being introduced to new environments and new people, and you know what I mean. That's it's a it's a tricky, delicate, touchy balance, right? Because the, those are those are little people that are going to have different worlds when they grow up, and you're doing your best not to fuck them up, right? So yeah. right, yeah. it's a different world. So that's when where you traded, when you traded a little bit, when you started trading, did you notice that every trade you made, you were thinking about those things? You were thinking about that past. You were thinking about the kids. You were thinking about everything. Did you notice that you were thinking about all of that every time you hit the fucking button? 
No, I was thinking, please, dear God, get me the fuck out of this situation. I, oh, I, yeah, that's even worse, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. so that wow. was, you know, and, and all of the things that I had learned previously were not what I needed. Obviously, they weren't what I needed because as quickly as it came, it left just as quickly, right? Right back yeah. out the door. So right. I had I had to change. I didn't know what I had to change. I couldn't figure it out. I finally ran into somebody who had prior floor experience and I paid for them to be a mentor. And they taught me from the basic level of this is the Black Shoals model. Here's how pricing on options works. Here's the different strategies, when you use them, why you use them. Here's how we put together when is a good opportunity for you. This guy didn't teach me tape. He just taught me the basics of here's how you survive in this environment and when you can pick areas of spots where there's better probability than others. And here's a good reason for you to take profits. Here's a good reason for you to stay long. And and I, I had that long-term viewpoint because it was the only way for me to not feel like I was taking my five grand and just sticking it out there on one spin of the freaking wheel and hoping it lands on freaking yep. black, right? Because yeah. you know, that's, that's just giving your money away. Like I couldn't, after saving that long to get that money back, I, could, I couldn't yeah. do it because I would have put myself like over right. a rail, you know what I mean? So right. I had to find a new way to, to, to fix this shit and I did. Yeah. Yeah, right. FYI, like sidebar, like when I'm when I, I went through a really bad period, 2015, 2016, maybe. And just like he was saying, I would just take I would just take the fourth quarter, 20 seconds left. We got to win the game. So just throw the fucking Hail Mary. Hope it sticks. And you keep doing that. You keep doing that. You keep doing that because you're so attached to solving whatever life issues that you have. So for Ronchero, it was, you know, it was getting back to where he was, maybe clearing debt. You get the kids, whatever it is. For me, it was like, I don't know what I, I had going on, but but my life affected every single trade that I made. My li my desire to get out of the situation force me to go for the Hail Mary so many times until you get to the point where you're just like, okay, what the fuck are we doing here? You know what I mean? This is obviously right. not sustainable. And Ronchin, I mean, it sounds like you said that you had taken enough. You, you were just like, I can't throw any more Hail Marys, right? Like you were like, it's, I've worked my ass off. My life circumstances have forced me to, to learn, develop skill sets and, and to develop the discipline that you, has brought you to where you're at right now, right? Oh, um, totally. And, and if yeah. I had taken a longer shot down the field, it, it would have it, it would have just basically undermined all of the education that I just spent the last, you know, two plus years right. gaining. Like what am I gonna yeah. do? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take that education that I that I fought so hard to get and then just piss it away on one trade. That 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 was insanity to me. Well wow. let's and I mean let's dig wow. into like let's talk about let's fast forward. Let's look at like where you're at right now. I mean the one of the first questions that we have in this in the series that we've been asking everybody is you know, the first one is why am I placing this trade, right? And so let's let's like zoom down into more, I guess, sort of the tactical side of things for you, and and talk about this, the skill sets that you've developed when you are looking at the markets and you're about to pull the trigger on a trade. Why why do you find that you are placing that trade? Like, what is is it? It's a combination of tape, it's flow. Um, you know, walk us through what your what your thought process typically entails. Um, so I have in my head and in my account setups, I have two very different styles of how I trade. And I have to have them both to feed both sides of who I am. And one side is, all right, I'm taking a methodical approach, sort of similar to somebody who goes into a neighborhood and buys a house that's been beaten to crap and it's a short sale. They're gonna buy it, they're gonna refurb it, they're gonna flip it, or they're gonna keep it and they're gonna rent it. That's the one side of me that looks for good companies that have been beaten up for, you know, whatever reason. I know they're not going out of business. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to have a long term approach to it and I'll trade around it, whether that's writing against it short term, you know, puts and calls on the long. That's what I talk about when I'm talking about trading the post. And then yep. there's the other side of me where I'm looking at it and I'm trying to catch short term momentum trades, whether that be a couple of hours, a couple of minutes, a couple of days, and 
those are the, to me, that's the most difficult aspect for me to work with and trade because it requires so much bottling up of emotion and fighting yourself to not pull the trigger so that you can allow yourself to be either right or wrong. But I, I can tell you, I'm, I'm much quicker to pull triggers today and take small losses and watch something run up than I am to hang in there and take bigger losses only to have it watch it come back to even, then not get out, and then really get pounded on the downside because that's typically what happens, right? But it's so it's just it's yep. just a me it's a mental fight. I've got to have two sides, one long term, one short term, and they just for it's just mental judo every day, bro, every day. Did you start doing that after the master course, or when did you when did you start doing the two the two account kind of the two separate strategies and really separating them into two accounts like that? So I've. I've always had the long, well, since I like cleared everything out and, and relearned everything, I started with the long-term side. And as I grew the account balances, and as I had some money that was sitting on the side from writing activity, I was, I was you know, in my head, I was like, well, I can take a shot here and I, I can take five grand now and I, I can put it into something. I can take 10 grand, I can take 25 grand, I can take a longer shot down the field Right. And see if I and see if I'm going to be right. I can tell you I've 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 hit on some of those, and so the reason that I've been able to hit on those is that when I went through the master course, I took what I had already learned, and then I learned how to read tape. And I was like, oh shit, I'm getting better at my entries and exits because I can see where these people are getting in or where they're getting out. And it, that doesn't mean you're always right. You're going to get head faked and you're going to get punched in the face all the time, but you stand a better chance. I stood a better chance. I do better when I'm using tape for those purposes. Now, uh, again, on the short-term swings, I'm either in step and I'm killing it or I'm not. And I, I can tell you like the last two or three weeks, you ask Brown Man. I mean, I I've been talking to him on text and I've been like, like, bro, what is wrong with me? Like, I, I have no idea. Have you seen that video of the, the, the chimp on the keyboard and it says, I have no idea what I'm doing? Dude, three weeks in a row, that's me. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Right, right. And this is, and, and you're speaking from, you know, I mean, we talked about like how rough your life was at various points, but now, we, and you are a very humble guy, you probably won't talk too much about it, but your life is very different now, you know, yes, it given, is. given what you've gotten to, the, you know, the, the profits that you've accumulated, the, the, you know, the processes that you have down, the consistency that you have trading. So even for someone who has, battled through and gotten the position where you're at right now, there's still weak month long spans where you feel like you're just completely out of sync. That will never go away. That that's all that is always going to happen. And and if you think that once you hit a specific mile marker or um you know keystone moment in this whole thing and all of a sudden, you know, it's all freaking puppies and kittens and you're getting a boat and you know hookers and all that kind of stuff, like forget it. It's not happening. Right. Yeah. Right. I yep. learned that too. I learned that as well. I mean, the the first time I made the money that I I wanted to make in my life, you know, I always thought that was it. That was it. I never had to worry about it again. I actually always thought, even even as I was going up, like I had my first ten thousand dollar day, I had my first twenty thousand dollar day, and then after that, I was like, yo, that's it. I don't have to worry about shit. But in reality, what I needed to focus on was just relaxing the pressure I put on myself to hit these things. And, you know, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. And when it happens, that's great. You know, and you just have to control how much of your emotions you tie towards these things so that you don't feel that pressure every single day to perform to this, to that and all that kind of stuff. So I agree completely. Yeah. Ranch, I mean, for you, like, how do you when you are out of sync, how do you get back in sync? Is it a is it a process of sitting down and sort of not putting on trades and, and just reading tape and like sort of literally syncing yourself back up with with the markets like how do how do you get back on the rails i guess dude i got a ton of empty tequila bottles in my garage right now and when i figure it out i'll tell you <laughs> all right like, i i don't know i don't know that there's a set answer for that like i, I don't know if it's um you know, honestly, I don't know if it's like phases of the moon. I don't know if it's I just need to like walk away and get out and, you know, and, and just and just chill somewhere for a week or a weekend or, or you know, just forget about the market for a few days. I, I can't put my finger on any one thing specific other than I just don't give up 
right? Like I, I just like if I know I need to take a little break, it's okay. I can cut myself some slack, but I, I'm I'm gonna be coming back in and I'm gonna take another run at it, and I right. won't make the same mistakes that I did prior, right? Like I, yeah. I, I I I I will mark on a chart. Here's where you fucked up, and don't do right. that again, right? Right, right. Got you. Yeah. All right. And, and ironically then, enough, like we're going to hear from his, I don't know how much we'll talk about strategy or whatever. Like we're all a product of what we go through. And Ranchero is a product of some serious catastrophe that not a lot of people go through. And because of that catastrophe, if you, when you guys actually take the course and you actually see what he does. And again, like I didn't know this shit until I had a conversation with him. Now, all his book has catastrophe fucking protection. Why does he have it? What the fuck do you think? Why? We are all a product of the shit that we go through. And because of some of that catastrophe protection he has, you save your ass from that one out of fucking 100 times or one out of 200 times. God forbid the shit hits the fan or whatever. You make back the same amount or whatever that you lost or you stay on that even keel and you just don't get to that place where – you have to deal with with working back five years just to just to make five thousand dollars to take another fucking shot. You know, that's the goal for both him and I right now. All I ha- all we have to do is stay. All I have to do is stay alive. That's all I fucking got to do. A chip in a chair, a good amount of chips, and I'm fucking good, baby. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's one of the things that we've talked about, and this is why you're teaching that 13th course in the class. Yeah, or, sorry, yeah. The 13th yeah. class in the course about hedging. Yeah. Keep- there's <laughs> some there's some shit that this guy does that again, like I respect a lot, and there's a lot of shit that that you know some of our other guys do. I respect a lot, and I'm I'm also trying to figure out how to incorporate as well, just because from a just from understanding the standpoint of how they created it and what they had to go through to create it. You know, at at some point it may happen to me as well. And if I don't, you know, think about it and be able to adapt when it does happen, hey, it could be right. something I'm missing out on. Right. Um, all right, Ranch. Well, let's get like let's let's go to the next question here, and we're gonna kind of keep zooming out. But um, in terms of the views, the views that you hold of the market, in terms of let's just say directional, directionally speaking. What are what do you find most informs your opinions? Um, that could be flow, like we talked about tape, maybe specific news sources that you look at, your gut, you know, charts. Like what what is your what's the biggest what are the biggest inputs for you that inform your views of, of where the markets are going? So um, I mean, just generally, what I've learned over time is that the value in what Wall Street Jesus does with the flow and putting up sentiment and all those freaking, ch- I don't know how the man does it. He puts up all those freaking right. indicators and he we sits there and, and, and he just comments on flow all day long, right? Like we don't know to, to me, he's a, he's a true I, junkie. He is. And, and I've, I, I, listen, when I first came into the room, I made the mistake of, oh damn, this guy's got a crystal ball. And I just started throwing money at stuff and it, yeah. it, and it, di- it didn't work, right? I was like, okay, yeah. back up, what's going on? I had to take a step back and figure it out. So just generally, I like to listen to what he has to say about the flow because you can take a lot from it and see where money is going. It, does, it, it doesn't mean that it's not a head fake, but it, it, it tells you something about direction. And, and I don't care what direction it goes, I just want to be on the right side of that direction. That's all I care about. I, I don't put on CNBC. I'll pull up something like it, like every day. And when we go through the master course, I'll, I'll, I'll show everybody what I do on a daily basis just to, just to set my stage and parameter of how you tie it all together. But I'll pull simple stuff up like a con a day. Like all that does is show me on a calendar, hey, if, if I didn't know the Fed was going to speak today, I'm an idiot, right? But a count a day, like I'll pull that up. I'll be like, okay, this is the like this is the trap I've got to look out for today. So you know, the little things like that. But as far as like an overall view of the the market, uh, honestly, I I don't care. It's a um, it's a vehicle for me to make money, and I don't care what direction it goes. And I I know that's really cynical, but I've that's I've, been, that's, that's I've, I've I've been through a lot, right? Like that's I'm here to get that money and and live my life. Like that that's what I'm doing here. Right. 
Right. So, I, so, so sorry. It's I know it's I know it's a vague I know it's a vague answer. Um, but just generally speaking, I, I don't care which way it goes. And and I think most of what we see out there, especially like on CNBC and Fox and Bloomberg, I, I think that's all, it's chicanery, man. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm super right. cynical about it. I think it's all, it's all designed to, to, to suck people in and, and, um, and, and get them to, to move their money to someplace. And I, I, I'd like to take the other side of that. So that that's kind of how I, I see it. And I don't have that stuff on in the background. It's, it's, it's poison to my head. So I just go with what I see in the room and what I'm looking at from a chart and from tape and the information that I've taken and the little models that I've built that say, hey, if NVIDIA does this, like gets cut in half, that shit's not going out of business anytime soon. I, I need to buy that because those guys are gonna reinvent themselves and that shit's coming back, and I don't care what Jim Cramer says because that guy's missing out, right? Like that's that's just I'm, so I'm more of a a street fighter than than anything else. And so you so there's aspects of sort of fundamentals of of the company and your perspective on the actual trajectory of the company's performance of of that name, its tape, its flow. Um, and so when you're putting on, but it's, but for the most part, you strive to remove any sort of directional bias, it sounds like, right? So when you're putting on a long-term position with some of these leaps, like we'll, we'll talk about, um, you're doing that based around the probabilities and the setups that, that you've looked at, but then you are also making sure that you can trade around that position at any given time because you don't, you don't have that much confidence, I guess you could say, in where, in the direction of where the market's going to go. That's exactly right. Because if I if I set myself up with a long term long, obviously my bias with that position is you know is is going to be to the upside. But let's say it just trades sideways. Well, it can trade sideways for the next year. I don't care about that. But what is what is going to happen is that if it does trade sideways for that year, I can sit there and I can write options on it for the entire year. And I'll make a shit ton of like I'll have a four hundred percent return on that position. Like it, like Boeing is a target for me right now, and you guys will hear me talk about that. And if Boeing trades sideways for the next freaking four years, guess what? I'll put a million dollars in my pocket. Right. That is what I want to learn. Like that that right there, and like again, like trading around a core swing. Like my mind is not wired yet to. Uh, you know, hold, I, I guess, lengthy positions or stick to that one position for a good amount of time. For some reason, my, my mind just goes elsewhere or whatever. But that that right there is exactly what I want to learn, because number one, it allows me to do less work and still make the same amount of money. And number two, it saves me from myself, too. You know what I mean? That particular strategy right there. Right. I mean, the in the the back and forth between you two just gives like proves our point that we just drill home over and over and over and over. But you know, there's always new people in here, and and it's it's one of these things that like you can't say it enough. You guys have you have taught one another a lot. I mean, Ranch, you learned tape from Lucci. You've learned a lot about you know what actually creates these moves from Lucci. But then he's sitting there saying that he aspires to kind of pick up another skill set, another perspective on how to look at these things from you. Everything is about constantly sort of adapting what you guys have learned to your personal training style and then pushing those that comfort zone constantly, right? Trying to constantly evolve yourself because the markets are always evolving and you're always trying yeah. to, to find it took me a year. It took me a solid year of just, you know, nothingness to figure out how to write options successfully, how to what, you know, how far I need to go for strike prices, what I should do for spreads, where to hedge if something goes fucking haywire, where to cut off, how to cut off a short leg and leave a long leg and let the long leg go. And then all these little, little, these little details that again, like it's easy for me and him to be like, okay, you know, here's a strategy, but you don't know what the fuck you're doing with this shit. Nobody knows what the fuck they're doing with this shit until you actually, you sit there, you do the work, you try to figure it out. You know, it takes, it takes a good amount of time man. it helps obviously if you have the right tools, um, in order to look at the market. Right. Yeah. I mean, Ron, do you want to speak to that real quick about just like, the difference between feeling it out in the dark on your own and then having someone at least show you this is how, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to understand about the markets and then you sort of, you know, taking it from there. Like, what is that juxtaposition like? 
I think it's invaluable to have somebody who has been through all of the ups and downs and has something to teach. You might not do everything exactly the same way that that person does it. For example, if I come in here and I teach everybody how to do what I do trading around the post, and if there's a few things about what I teach you that doesn't work for you and you adapt it to fit your personality, your emotions, your style of trading, then that's awesome. You should do that, right? Because I've taken all this information over all these years and where it really went over the top for me was when I learned how to read tape. And that's what that's what set it off for me in a meaningful material way. So right. just by, and, and, and I can tell you, like you just said, Charlie, the other people in the room that are experienced traders, I will trade side by side with, I will rotate in and out with like Brown man, Kelman, you know, option trader, Tim, uh, Denny. I can't keep up with Denny on, on freaking uh, price line. Now, like I can't trade that thing anymore. Like sometimes, sometimes I can get in lockstep with, with Lucci. I can't always do it because dude, one minute he'll be like, Hey, I'm long freaking a hundred thousand contracts a freaking spy and then i'm like all right i'm I'm following him and then he's like nah fuck that we're going puts i'm like oh are you kidding me? <laughs> flips it pretty quickly flips it pretty quickly <laughs> so you got yeah. you got you 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 have to be able to absorb it and put it into your own pocket to pull the trigger because I, I i can't be there to tell you when you should or shouldn't do it i can give you the here's when you should and shouldn't and the why and here's how you find it, and here's how you go through the steps to do it. But you got to be the one to pull the trigger because at the end of the day, your report card is that P and L, right? That's the and that that's how you did. That's your feedback. That's your information, and that says how you're doing. And you can't you can't lie to yourself with that number in your face. So that tells you, am, am I on track or am I off track? And if I'm off track, where do I need to fix it? And right. I think that that's what's so powerful about this room and about what Lucci teaches and about all of these talented people in here giving how they go about their trading. So you can take away something from everybody in here that has paid their dues and, and trades well. You, you, can, you can watch and trade with them and do very well without having to be in and feeling like I need to trade something every single second of the day. But there's no and there's no handouts, right? I mean, there's no one in there. No matter how. Gotta, yeah. Yeah, that's right. You got to do it yourself. You got to do the work, right. and and you're the one that's pulling the trigger. Like I said, your your P and L is going to tell you how you're doing. Right, right, right. Well, let's. I mean, let's talk about why why you trade, right? And this could be a question about lifestyle for you. I mean, everyone's had different answers to this. Um, your life, as we referenced earlier, has evolved a lot since the days, of, you know, sleeping above the garage, like. <laughs> why when you wake up in the especially in the days when it sucks when it's brutal like what is your answer to that why you're sitting there trading why you're doing it well so you you know that shit's going to get better and if you don't have that fundamental belief in just getting up out of bed every single day you know you're going to have good days you know you're going to have bad days if you don't have the foresight to say i i can work my way through it then find something else that's going to help you find that because you need to have a good mental state to be able to do this. And if, and if you're not doing well, you got to be able to take a step away and not get so frustrated and say F it and just throw your money out there on one trade and say, this is it. I'm in or out. Right. So right. Um, I, I think that that's really important and you've, you've just got to be able to work yourself through that. Got it. Got it. And so that, I mean, when it comes to, you, sorry, I got some New York City sirens behind me, per usual. But um, when it comes to you, like, do you question, do you have times where you question, like, why, why do I want to keep doing this? Um, you know, given that it is so difficult and time <laughs> doing, and you're probably at a point where you have money where you don't have to, like, what keeps you coming back, I guess? Okay, so I, I, to I told Brown Man this story, like, I did my taxes early this year, and I got them done, and I, I paid... And I, I took a step back and I looked at everything and I was like, you know what? Liquidate all of it, like sell, sell it all. I was like, I need, I need all this cash. I need it all in one spot. 
Like I just had that, I had the, and I do this every once in a while. I'll take a look at everything and I'll be like, you know what? Clear the freaking board and I'll just sell it all for no damn good reason, right? And I start over. And then like what I'll do is I'll, like in this most recent one, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take 25, I'm not going to put anything else in my account. I'm going to put 25 grand in there. I'm going to go back and remind myself what it used to be like to really sweat to get by. And I'm going to take this 25 grand and I'm going to build it back up. To, yeah, so you know, you, over a million dollars or whatever. Like I, I self torture myself like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you're he's like he's like yeah. Louis C.K. Louis C.K. scraps his whole comedy bit every single fucking year and then forces himself to come up with a new one. Yep. Seinfeld was like, I use I've been using this shit for the last ten fucking years. I've been using the same shit for the last ten years. Right. He's fucking Louis C.K. Hopefully he's not jerking off on random. Yeah, on, let's yeah, let's let's hope yeah, you hope that you're not you don't have other shit going on in that hotel room that you're in right now, Ross. But um. <laughs> Yeah, no, the lobby. Yeah, yeah, you're in the lobby. We're 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 good. Um, yeah, you you're a masochist, man. Like you you love, and that's what I think people realize when they come and they trade for a longer period of time. Um, this same goes for for other you know challenges, entrepreneurship, sports. Like it becomes a lot more than just you know the the thing that you first thought it was going to be about when you got into it, which is making money. You know, and for you, I, I'm I'm not going to sit here and say that you don't care about making money. I know you do, um, but you like just the constant onslaught of challenge, right? You like how it kind of carves you out more and more and more and forces you to to evolve constantly. I do, and and I like one of the things that I like this this is this business and and what you do is solitary and it can be lonely and if you don't have an outlet and people that you can talk with that are like minded it can become like being in an isolation chamber right like it it can get it can get weird and you can you can get pretty weird if if you don't have an outlet so where yeah. I find myself yeah. in, some in of those traders and you know when you meet you know when you meet those traders and sound off if you guys have met those traders if you ever meet those weird fucking traders that you know have put themselves like they haven't talked to the world or they haven't talked to anybody in two years, up on all the on all the windows and they're <laughs> fucking insane like these people are you look at them and you're like yo you 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 got issues now, like you know what I mean. You get you gotta get some fucking help. You know how you go to those trader expo things and you're you're in a room filled with a bunch of freaking, but mostly ninety nine percent dudes uh, that are just very very strange, bro. I'll, I, I guarantee a large percentage of those people they haven't talked to human beings in a good amount of time. I can't go to those things for that reason. Like I'm like I'm doing. I'm like who the fuck are these people? Like what 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 are you doing here? What are you doing? <laughs> and this is like, but yo, this Ron's, is what Tim talks about. Sorry, go ahead. I want Ron's to answer the question though. What is your why? Why are you doing this shit? Like what is your thing? What what's your what 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 gets you up in the morning? Why are you you know what does trading do for the why? Like is it because you're you're trying to hit this goal? Is it because you're you're trying to build another family? Like what what is it wealth? What 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 are you doing it for, bro? Okay, so I don't know that there's one specific answer, gotcha. and I've, I've got, I've got, you know, there are a list of things. There, are, there's a list of things like, okay, well, what am I gonna do? Am I take this money? Am I stick it somewhere in an account where it just generates interest for me, and I go move to Palm Springs and just like get my monthly and not like right. drop out? Like that, like it's it's challenging. Some people would, yeah. Right. There's uh, some people maybe there. It's it's a it's a good group of people when I'm in there, you know, um, having a good time. I, I know some people, it, it, whether it rubs people the wrong way or not, I don't care. Like I'm coming in there and I'm going to have a good time because if I'm loose and having a good time and talking with people, I'm 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 trading well. Um, otherwise, you don't hear from me. But like I need to travel. I need to get out like I go through phases where I'm like, yo, I need, I need that fast car. Right. And then I'll get the fast car and I'll drive it for six months. And I'm like, fuck it. I don't need this thing anymore. And then right. I'll do something else. You know what I mean? He's a like, curious so man. He's a curious man who goes where, where his, you know, where, where those intentions or the, that, that sort of curiosity takes him uh, in that moment. Correct. Ranchero? I would say that's true. There you go. There you go. That's a good. That's, that's good enough. reason as any. And, right, and well, trading let's... gives you the time. Trading gives you the time to feed that curiosity, you know, and it gives you the convenience that you don't have to worry about, you know, the kitchen um, while you feed that curiosity. 
hopefully, again, we'll all get to a point where we can feed this curiosity every single day without having to trade. But I don't think I don't even think that would happen. Like, Rancher, are you would you would you agree that you would see yourself doing this for the next 10, 20 years, like, you know, in some capacity? I think yes, because right. especially with especially with writing, like I don't need to come in and exactly be, uh, to be crazy, right? Like one of the one of my one of my talents is exactly picking the top of something, right? So I learned, okay, idiot, you fought, you chased everybody to the freaking top, and you're gonna buy calls. No, you're gonna write and you're gonna collect money because the shit topped out. So. Yo, it feels so good to do it too. It feels so, me and him are. This is what me and him can do. You know, this is when we're trading together. We'll sit there and look at an AMD, or we'll sit there and look at an Amazon that's run a hundred points. And if you catch that right, you get this fat, fat, fat premium that makes it basically makes it okay that you missed the whole in hundred. The hundred points up, you missed it. Fuck it, fine, it's okay. If we catch that top and we get to write it off, I'll make the same amount. Whatever. It's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Well then, so let's the last question, and then I want to dig into the strategy. I want to dig into uh, trading around trading the posts. But um, the last question, and this is the question is, why is your version of success what it is? Right? What do you think has shaped your version of success? And the first answer to that, or you, you know, in order to answer that question, you have to answer what is your version of success. So for you, like, what does trading success look like? Um. <laughs> Knowing that when I'm an old man rolling around the trailer park that I am going to be able to put food on my table and not have to work at Walmart. Like that's to me, that's my version of, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in a good spot. I don't, I don't need to freak out right now. And I know that I've got money there and I know that I can make money if I need to, I don't need to go work at Walmart. Like to me, just having, that level of comfort um, is my own level and version of success. Being able to go and and, and get on a plane and, and and fly to you know to to Europe or or Bora Bora and, and and get a lie flat seat. You know what I mean? Like that that's success to me, right? Like that's th those little things are, are are what matter to me, right? My kids are good. They don't they're they're not going to come out of school with with crushing debt and, and, and be freaking out like that's success to me. So right, I measure it in, in little compartments like that as opposed to I have I have a billion dollars and I'm an asshole to the world. That's that's not success to me. Right. Right. And do you do you have a sense for why that I mean because everybody has different it, it means something different to everybody. So like why what do you think has informed that version of success mostly for you? For some people it's how they grew up. Like Luchi and I talk about the influence of our fathers on us and how that you know, has shaped who we are and, and, and what we prioritize. Like, do you look back in your life in certain events that, that changed you and that made you realize like, all right, I need, I need to be in a place where I have this kind of money where I can, you know, I can be okay in this regard. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I grew, I grew, I mean, grow, you can relate all this stuff back to when you were younger, right? Like I was always, um, I was always the smallest one on the hockey team. I was always the smallest one on the lacrosse field. And I was always told by people, you can't, you won't, you can't, you won't. And I was like, fuck you, watch me. So right. like, right. that's just like how all of this, you know, came to be where it's at. I don't, I don't get myself down or, or listen to that. I find motivation in, in somebody telling me that I can or can't do something. So anytime, especially in my family, it's like, you know, like, hey, you know, you're, you're not cut out for that. Like that, that, that shit's for Ivy Lube kids. No offense, Charlie. But <laughs> hey, Duke is an Ivy League. All right, come on, we're not in the <laughs> Duke, Duke I boy. Pride Yeah, I pride myself on not having gone to an Ivy. Um, yeah, no, totally. I mean, and Brown, Brown said the same thing on you know last week. Yeah, and he was, yeah, it's that's, just yeah, that's Brown man. Under you know of of being uh, disrespected and Luch, that was huge for you. I mean, that was one of the reasons I feel like you started saying Luch, because you wanted to have you wanted to have a, a platform and you were calling out, you know, manipulation and bullshit that you were seeing that, that wasn't happening. But you also like, you, I think you wanted respect for what you had created, where you'd come from. And you wanted to tell your story and be like, I fucking did this. So 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I mean, a lot of it for me, especially in the beginning, was just looking on CNBC and being like, these people don't look like me. They don't look like me, and they don't talk like me. They don't, they don't act like me. And I'm like, eh, you know, but I do what these people do. But yeah. what, you know, and and so there's there's just some kind of there's just some kind of opinion or some kind of way of looking at it that it just wasn't being shown out there. So I looked at it as like. Fuck it, let's give it a shot. And then once you put it out there, then you start realizing like how different traders are. Like there's traders all over the freaking world, man, and in so many different walks of life and so many different uh, uh, periods in their lives. Twenty years old to fucking seventy years old. Everybody's gone through different shit. Everybody's going through different shit, and they bring all that to the market. They all have other shit going on. They all got their lives going on, and and like none of that was anywhere. None, none of that was anywhere and nobody even looked at a trader as like any is, is this you is your mean? profession? You mean to tell me this is what you do, bro? Like what the fuck does that even mean? So, right. you know, defining that and being able to showcase all of this and being like, yo, this, listen, these are real people. They go through some serious shit. They come back and, you know, they they accomplish crazy things and I always put it right up there with high performance athletes. Like we the pressure to do some of the stuff that we do and get to the levels that, that we're trying to get, we are we have to perform at high levels. And this requires a lot of mental work. It requires a lot of discipline. It requires a lot of, uh, you know, tuning shit off. It, you know, it requires a lot, you know, sacri crazy amounts of sacrifice and work, um, you know, that people just don't even really talk about. So that was always my kind of thing. Like somebody should put this shit out there, you know. Right. Word. Well said. Um, all right. Well, the, the the one of the main reasons that we're here is because we want to dig into more of, Ranch, your strategy, right, and what you're going to be teaching in the uh, Trading the Post um, sort of bonus course to the master course. And I'll pull up the, uh, the screen here real quick. Um, so, guys, this is, if you're just joining us, this is an extra component that uh, Ranchero is going to be teaching of this um, next edition of the master course. So, we've got... Um, we got the next session, the live session starting up Monday, March 25th. That's less than a week away. We announced yesterday that we have 10 spots that we're setting aside for a $750 discount. And uh, four of them are already gone. So we got six left. Um, so if you're interested, get your ass in gear. Uh, either sign up, www.sanglucci.com forward slash MC750, or email me, charlotte.sanglucci.com. If you have a question, we'll get you sorted. Um, Luch, I think we got maybe some audio issues on your end. Um, let's see here. I'm him. Sorry, guys. Um, there we go. Um, sorry about that. So, yeah, we got um, Ranch is going to be teaching an extra version of this, uh, an extra bonus aspect to this class. You're going to get all the usual stuff. Um, Lucci's how Lucci trades equities and options, flow trading, tape reading, trading psychology, his options writing strategy. He's going to have an extra course, extra class about hedging, um, all the usual good shit. But then, Ranch, let's go through, let's talk a little bit about trading the post. Um, tell these guys what that's about. I got a visual here that I'll pull up here in a second, um, taking you through some of the bullet points. But tell us how you develop this strategy and and really, you know, what what it's all about. Sure. So. Um I developed this strategy when I was working with my mentor back in 2009, 2010. And the, the whole thing about the strategy, I, I call it trading around the post. Other people call it stock replacement. There's lots of different terms people use for it. But basically, if you put it into layman's terms of you're somebody who's flipping a house, you're, you're buying a house that's in foreclosure, or it's beat up, you're going to make it pretty and flip it again. So. For example, NVIDIA is a, is a perfect example. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for companies that have been, it, it, ideal situations would be something that's cut in half. NVIDIA was basically cut in half from its high. In my opinion, NVIDIA is a company that is super sharp, makes a great product, has many different products, has a great R&D department. I don't need to dig super, super deep and like at a CFA level and, and analyze the company, I know enough that I'm willing to take a shot on a company like that because if the market gets beat up, that stock's already been cut in half. How much more beating can it take? So that's kind of my premise of how do I pick a company? I know it's a good company because they've got earnings every quarter. It's not a business plan, right? A business plan is somebody who has 
negative earnings quarter after quarter after quarter, and they're just burning cash from in, from different rounds of, of investment. So I'm buying something like that with a long-term leap. I'm looking at something specific when I'm buying that leap, and that is which option am I going to buy? Well, I'm basing that off of things like the Greeks. Lucci's not big on this stuff, but to me it matters. It's important because that helps determine what kind of expectation I can have from that particular investment. Right. So I'm doing that, things are raw, right? Like NVIDIA was was raw after they came out and, and announced they were going to have issues. And I had bought some leaps on it, wrote it up to like 165. I didn't roll. I got It got smacked again. Um, it gave me another opportunity to, to buy another leg, right? So these are the things I'll, I'll be covering, but what it does is it gives you a position, a stake in something like that that's been cut in half. You're somewhat insulated from market rollover, and as time goes by and you're able to write against this position and or also trade either break it, breakouts or breakdowns, that money also goes into a pot for me to be able to buy long-term crash portfolio protection. I'll tell you when to buy it, how far out to buy it, and how you manage those as time, theta, starts to eat away at those. So I'm always constantly maneuvering money around this one position with these different levels of in and out and long-term protection from a portfolio standpoint is concerned because as we all know, you're gonna get shakeouts. And if, it, if, it, if you get a 20% shakeout on something and you are long something like an NVIDIA and you've been collecting that cash and you've been buying these zombie apocalypse puts and that thing crashes, well, guess what? You just made all your money back plus, right? I make more money when the market rolls over on disaster puts than I do at anything else. And uh, uh, that's that's what I'm I'm going to show you how to do that. So that's kind of the strategy in in a nutshell. Sweet, <laughs> Mooch. I mean, have you like? How do you when you've seen him putting this to work? Like, what is your what has been your approach to integrating this into your own trading? And what aspects do you feel like you're still you're still working on that that Ron's <laughs> Yeah, sure. yeah. So I'll I'll have a core. I'll have similar to what he's talking about, but again, like he'll stick with it. He'll stick with some of these names, uh, you know, for for just you know a good a, actually a good amount longer. And again, the, the the more you stick with anything, you know, the more you're gonna really understand how that thing moves. In particular, he'll stick with a couple of basket of names. Um, you know, and, and really get to know these things and really get to move around these things. So what he's saying is, as far as the writing goes, you know, he's he's making sure that these core positions he has, he, he's, they're free trades. And, uh, you know, they, he's paying well more for those uh, 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 for those trades in profits that he's collecting uh, uh, from writing here. And then the disaster puts. This is where I don't do I don't do I don't do any of this. And sometimes. We all know, like, how many of you guys have gotten caught in something super heavy because you got married to the idea that you were going to get this breakout? Like, look, look at Goldman Sachs. If you guys want to look at an example, look at Goldman Sachs today. The, you know, people are thinking this thing's going to 210 bucks. It's a breakout, da 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 da, and then it tanks, you know, six, seven points. You get size and stuff like this, and you get caught. You know, with these big directional trades, and you're just not you, you're just not thinking of the other side. And then by the time you do, it's too fucking late. It's too fucking late. And if you do damage to yourself like that, and you do it over and over and over and over again, I mean, that's this is surefire way of blowing up accounts. And I know a lot of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And again, just having a very small position, or a small percentage of your 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 portfolio, or however much you're putting towards X, Y, and Z trade, in some disaster protection, you can make all that shit back. You make all that shit back, and now you know it's there too. You know it's there. You're able to cut losses quicker. You know you're covered over here, and you can move faster. You know, so a lot of this, a lot of his strategy is predicated. And again, this is this is from my viewpoint on like detaching yourself from that direction like it's it's all basically a nice little package so that hey yeah you might have an idea on direction but all this other shit we got going around it 
it, it, it makes sure it saves us from getting too biased uh, on that on on that particular direction. You know, that way, if you do catch it right and you get that direction, boom, you're going to freaking clear some serious cash. You can catch a Microsoft from 100 bucks to a fucking 120 dollars if you stick it out for six months and keep rolling and keep rolling and you're collecting money writing around it. But if you're wrong, you're not fucking decimated, man. You're not left in front of a fucking 7-Eleven. You know, asking for fucking chocolate and shit, you know? <laughs> In front of myself, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, well said. Ron, you, you pretty much agree. With, I don't know about the 7-Eleven, the chocolate aspect, but yeah, anything it's, else? It's, it's Circle K on the West Coast. <laughs> Right, right. Oh, it's Wawa. What is it on in DC? Wawa. What is it DC? In the South, they got some other shit. Anyways, whatever. I don't know. Um, all right. So then, in terms of there's this one aspect of what you were telling us that you're going to include in the in the course, Ranch, and you were talking about adding, writing, rolling, morphing. I think everybody kind of knows adding, writing, and rolling, but explain morphing in this context. Context. Like, what is what is that? Let's say, for example you follow me or Lucci on one of these crazy ass rights and shit goes the wrong way. So how, how do you manage that to get your money back? So for example, you're clearly wrong. The stock reaches a point of an area where it has resisted over, let's say the last six months, nine months, Time frame doesn't matter, but it gets to that area and it, it, it always resists and it rolls over. Well, guess what? Today's the day that it says, I know you wrote, fuck you, I'm going higher, right? How do you get yourself out of that position even and then get yourself to a point of profitability? So basically what I'm teaching you is, okay, at this level, you're in an exposed position. How do you adjust this position so that you don't just close it out at a loss, but that you at least get yourself back to even, and then how do you get yourself back into a position where you can become profitable? That's my that that's what morphing means. That's what morphing means. Got how it. to stick and move, baby. How to stick and move. That's what it is. How to stick and move. You know. Stay on your feet. Stay light. Stay light. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, guys, I know a lot of you probably have questions. We've got a couple in the in the um, in the chat here, so keep them coming. Um, we will do our last sort of mention of the master course here. Um, starts Monday, March twenty fifth. Six spots left of the 10 that we set aside yesterday. So if you guys are interested, get moving. Email me, charlie at sanglucci.com or go to www.sanglucci.com forward slash MC750. Um, there are additional discounts for private Twitter feed and Steam room members. Email me directly if you're one of them. You get everything that you get in the master course, plus you get Ron Chero's, um Trading the Post bonus course, which, as you've just heard, is going to be extremely valuable, I think, for a lot of you guys. So... Uh, Ron, just take a couple questions and then we'll uh, we'll get you out of here. I know you got better things to do than sit in this lobby talking to us. So, um, all right, we got one from from Andrew. Uh, how do you guys go about changing your mindset on losses so you can power through them? Like flipping the definition of taking a loss so you can trade without emotion and focus more on what's in front of you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll, let's let Ron answer this one because, again, like this one's going to come up all the time. And this is more of a you thing versus a, a strategy thing. But, Ron, what do you got for him, man? So um, I can tell that when I went through the master course, especially when we got through the psychology section, what I learned from Lucci was a mindset of losses and Losses are going to happen. There's no way to get around it. And from a psychological standpoint, it's a level of your confidence in knowing that you're going to be able to move on to the next trade. So it doesn't matter in my mind what the loss is. I'm going to cut it loose and I'm going to move on. Now, having said that, what I can tell you is that I still emotionally will go through periods of time, regardless of how big the size of the trade is, where if I have made a bad decision and I string a series of bad decisions together, five, six, eight, 10, 12 trades or days in a row, I struggle, man. Like emotionally, it is very difficult. So there, there is no easy fix to it. You just have to, you have to keep pushing through and I'll, I'll hit guys like Kelman and Brown man. And I'll be like, bro, I'm off. Like what's wrong with me? And, and you just got to keep 
pushing through. There, there's there's no easy fix to that, in in my opinion. Luch, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I co-sign this. I mean, Andrew is saying so. It's like going to the gym every day, and and yeah, man, it, it's how you look at the loss. Like it's what Ranchero was saying. Like you're looking at. And again, like I'm, I'm basically giving you a psychological profile right now after one question, but I'm pretty sure I'm fucking accurate. Um, so you're, you're looking at these things as a, as, as you're, you know, you bring these emotions to every single trade you make. So in reality, like the loss always stays with you. Everything you do, like you're doing it with the loss on your fucking back. It's like you're just, it's just sitting there. It's just there and, and present in everything. Um, that you have going on. So it's almost like for you, you're looking for this golden nugget for us to tell you to be like, yo, how did you get over this shit? You know what I'm saying? Because So that's a you thing. That, that That's a literally a you problem. We all have other ways to get over it. But the point is we got over it. We moved on and we, we, we dealt with what we got going on right now. So that, that would be the answer to your question. And again, that's not the answer that you want. But, you know, I'm not you. I don't have to deal with whatever the fuck you got going on. Maybe you got maybe you got two different maybe you got, you know, child support. Maybe you got a fucking a business partner that fucking did you wrong. Maybe you got maybe you just broke up with a girl like I have no idea what you got going on in your life, bro. So that's a you problem. bro. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, one of the things that we do is we point out the thing, like some of the things that work for other people, right? And that's one of the reasons we've had the series. That's the reason we got guys like Ranch and obviously Lucci up here talking. Um, but there's no way, there is no silver bullet to make the emotional aspect of this, you know, go away. It's a matter of, of trying out various different things um, and at least confronting what, you know, I, I, Luch, I think the thing that you call people to do in the course, and Ranch, you might be able to speak to this too, is that you demand honesty from people. Oh, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100. It's like you can't come to the table and take this course without me figuring out like what's going on with you. You have right. to bring that on the table, which nobody's ever asked you to do. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody's ever going to ask you like, yo, what do you have going on in your fucking life? Now, especially somebody that you don't even fucking know. You know what I mean? You don't even have those conversations with your mother for Christ's sakes. You know, you know? So what are you going to, you know, I'm the one that's going to be like, listen, what do you, what do you have going on? Bring that shit to the table. How have you fucked up? And talk about it. And once you start doing it, you'll be you'll you'll immediately realize how quick you're going to be able to get over it. Just because you're putting the shit on the table, that means you're dealing with it instead of just lugging it around like a motherfucking you know, like a, like a suitcase with no fucking handle. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. So there's things that everybody can do that that. You know that um, it's your version of that, right? But being honest with yourself and showing up for yourself and challenging yourself—that's going to look different for everybody. But the concept, um, you know, remains true. I think for everybody. So, um, and I think a lot of it, Ron, you probably say the same thing. I know you—you you have in the past. It's just about experience, man. It's just about um, putting yourself out there over and over again, and 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 learning from it, and showing up again, you know, the next day, and just not stopping, right? I mean, that just sort of relentless attitude to 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 not give up on it. Agreed. Um, and, and when something catches you off guard, because I can tell you I am surprised occasionally by how I react to some things that have happened to me before or some things where I look at it and I say, that's not going to bother me. And then when it happens, I'm like, holy shit, that really put me on my ass. Like that, yep. that's, that's hard. That's hard to deal with. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Just keep trudging forward, man. That's, that's, yeah. that's all you can do. This one Andrew's got is a good one. How did Ronchero grow the account from 5K to a sizable account? I mean, when you were coming on your way back, you know, obviously you're starting at freaking 5,000 and, and the, the road ahead of you was so crazy. You know, how were you – like, was it a slow process? You know, like, did you stack up to a point where you were able to take some some bigger risk out there? And then, you know, how did it how did it happen? Yeah, glacially moving. It, it's glacially it's not – it is very difficult with, with a with a small account. You have to have patience, or yeah. you've got to hit a home run. So I, right. over the course of years, slowly built up, and I was doing what I just told you. I was looking for companies that had gotten beaten up. I bought them at discounted prices relative to where the market was. I bought the long term leaps, and I sat in them. And then when I had the opportunity to write against them, I would write against them. So it was collect a quarter, 
collect a penny, collect 50 cents, just let it add up. And then that's, yeah. that's it. It's, it's, yeah. it's not any harder than that, but it is freaking hard to sit there and build it up. But if, Hey, if you, if you, you can build it up, do you have the patience to build it up? Do you have the motherfucking patience? And only now, like I'm starting to get it. It's only now after maybe a decade of all this shit, I'm starting to actually get that level of patience because always before I'm looking for that next directional that's going to take me to the promised land, baby. But in reality, like it also causes a lot of other problems. It causes a lot of other problems in the form of losses, in the form of emotional pitfalls, in the form of, of, uh, you know, other things that it wrecks along the way. Um, you know, so that's, that's a big deal. Got that's it. A big deal. All right, we got um, a couple more questions here. Um, Miles is asking, what's the frequency of the class? Because um, he doesn't think he can make this one. Miles, we are starting to do these less frequently, so we're doing them a couple times a year now. The next one will, will be a couple months from now, maybe like July-ish. Um, yeah, but we're doing them. End of summer. Yeah, we're doing um, we're doing them less frequently. You get access to every session, previous recordings, future live sessions. So we do have a lot of people, even though they can't make this upcoming live session, they sign up. They go in with the recordings, um, and then they and then they go in the, live, in the next live session they can sign up for. But um, email me yeah. if you want, if you want to talk more about that. Happy to do that. Uh, Esther, to Esther, she, uh, looks like you got a bunch of questions here on the actual master course. Charlie's going to email you. Don't worry, you'll get you'll get uh, yep. you'll get taken care of. Yep. Um, That's what we're about. yep. Um, we're looking good right, here. Maybe, maybe one more. Let's do one more here. Um, okay. There was a good one. Let me see. Um, all right, the rump. I have a goal to get to 25G. Should I not focus on it as to not influence my trades? Huh. I just, I just, I just uh, sent him a response. I said you answered your own question. We all don't. Right. We, we, I mean, <laughs> do you guys want to hear it again? I have a goal to get to 25 grand. Should I not focus on it as to not influence my trade? I mean, Ronchero, I'll put this to you. How many times have you put a dollar amount to a, you know, to a goal or a place that you want to go? And what, what, I mean, you tell me what happened. You'll strangle it. So, I mean, Brown man's the perfect example. He came in here. Remember he was, he was, he was, he was talking to me about, Hey, I want to hit this number. And I just kept telling him, forget the number, dude, forget the number. Just do the right thing and trade the way you're supposed to trade. And then he looked up and he's like, dude, I blew past the number. So if you focus <laughs> on the number, like that's, that's what's going to hold you back in nine times out of 10. That's what's going to hold you back. There you go. I'll give you a there perfect you example. I'm trying to get to five miles running and I'll run and I'll run and I'll run. Once I get to like four miles and once I get to like four and a half, I'll sit there and I'll think about five. And then I'll be like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm hopping off this motherfucking treadmill right now. It's like little shit, little, sh little shit. You sit there and you do all that kind of stuff like it does hold you back. So forget about that. Forget about that. Focus on eating right. Focus on fucking, you know, stretching and shit. Focus on the right playlist so that your ass doesn't get bored out there on the fucking street or whatever. And you'll you'll hit the five miles. You'll blow past that. You'll run 10. Before you know it, you're doing half marathons in fucking New York City, man. You know what I mean? Like forget about all that shit. The more obsessed you get with the goal, the more you fixate on it, the easier it is to self-sabotage yourself with, around that goal, right? But if you're focusing on the process, it's it's a lot more difficult to, to sabotage. Um, James is asking, what percentage of my account should I risk per trade? James, that's something we talk about in the course. That's something Ranch teaches in the course, so good question. Yeah. Um, but that is, you know, a lot of these questions, guys, are good questions, but this is stuff that, that we do teach in the course. Um, and that's so, also personal shit. A lot of that stuff is personal. A lot of what we teach in the course is for you to figure out what style fits you. James, you're asking a question that let's say you pick up a book and they'll be like, OK, you should only risk one percent to two percent per trade. In reality, if your strategy leans towards a more writing strategy, you got to use a fuck ton of leverage to make a very small amount of money. So all of that. All of those little rules, they don't even apply to you. So you have to build your own strategy. This is what we teach. This is what I teach. This is what I force you guys to realize that none of that shit, none of that, the shit that you pull out in a book, yes, great. It's basics. It'll teach you like how shit generally works. But this stuff that you're going to get in the court, you can't get this shit reading a motherfucking book. If you can read a book and pay, you know, I wouldn't have you paying $3,000 for some shit you can get in a fucking, you know, a beginner's how to fucking day trade online 
online or whatever. If you need that, you want technical analysis, you want all that shit, go to those books, all right? So we will throw shit at you in a much different way, forcing you to, to uh, you know, to, to, to use your uh, brain in a much different way and it's just a different way of looking at the market than what is already out there. Boom. That's a good note to, to end on. Ranch, anything else you want to say to these guys before we before we put you the next screen you'll be in front of? We'll be teaching the master course, man, alongside alongside Lucci. So what, what anything else you want to your pearls of wisdom you want to drop on the public before we wrap no, up? No, I, I just I, to echo a lot of what Lucci just said. I, I don't know you individually. I don't know your mental state, what size accounts you have. I don't know what your you know net worth is your credit scores it's like all of those things are things that you have to work out yourself either before or while you're here to see if what we teach you is going to fit what you do and if what i teach you doesn't fit what you do okay well it, at least you learned something you, you learned not to do what i do right but if you can take some stuff away and incorporate it to what you are doing and become a better um, it become better at, at this game, then it's it's going to be well worth your time. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you, you know, you buy this stock at this level and you pay this much. Like I'm I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give you guidelines and you're going to fill in the blanks. This is a journey for yourself as much as it is for us. There that's you go. The to, that's the only way to do it long term. That's the reason that we that we teach it like that, guys. So, all right. That's a wrap. Hit me up, um, charliatsangluchi.com. If you guys have questions, Luch and I will be back on Thursday. We're going to do a, a, a special look at um, how he chooses options, which 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 strike you're going to, how you choose which strike you're going to you're going to go after. Obviously, you can talk forever on that, but it'll be a good, solid 45 minute uh, discussion on that. We'll uh, keep your eyes on Twitter, email. We'll we'll send out a link for that. All, All right, guys. Take care. Thanks, Ron.